The molecules that we've looked at so far did not have any lone pairs on the central atom, but there are a lot of uh, molecules that do. Um, so the lone pairs have an effect on the geometry. So we talk about two different kinds of geometry, the electron geometry and the molecular geometry. Electron geometry, we're looking at how are the electron groups arranged. And the electron groups can include a lone pair or a single electron. When we look at the molecular geometry, we're looking at how are the atoms arranged. The arrangement of the electron groups affects the arrangement of the atoms, but the molecular shape is just the atoms. When there are no lone pairs, those two things are exactly the same. Let's look at ammonia. Um, let me just draw the Lewis structure in here real quick. H N H H. When we look at the Lewis structure for ammonia, we see that there are one, two, three, four electron groups, three single bonds and a lone pair. Four groups get away from each other by forming a tetrahedron. So here we have an illustration of the tetrahedron. That is the electron geometry. The molecular geometry, though, does not include the lone pair. The lone pair is there, but it's not described in the molecular geometry. So what I recommend is that you think of the lone pair as an invisible balloon. So, you know, here I've got my, all my balloons. You know, what, what would happen if some of them were invisible? They're still going to push the others into that same shape. But when I go to look at it, it's going to have a different shape. So think of the whole thing. This is the electron geometry. And then what we're going to do is we say, well, that's invisible. Isn't that fun? Oops. If that guy's invisible, and think about it, lone pair of electrons. Electrons are 2,000 times smaller than the protons in the nucleus. And even the nucleus is really teeny tiny. And so could you see that? Could you see a lone pair of electrons if you were close enough to see atoms? No, you couldn't. It's too small. So we make that invisible, and then this is the shape we have left. This is called a trigonal pyramid. It's not trigonal planar because it's not flat. It's a shallow pyramid. The nitrogen in the middle is stuck up a little bit from the hydrogens because of that invisible lone pair. Any questions? Trigonal pyramid. The lone pairs are actually more repulsive than the bonding pairs, which you're like, what? how does that work? Because they're smaller, right? But they spread out in space more. Um, here's an illustration of um, a bonding electron pair between two nuclei. So when the electrons are in a bonding pair forming a covalent bond between these two atoms, this is the shape they occupy. If you have a lone pair, it's not being restricted to be between the two atoms, and so it spreads out more. So the lone pair is like a bigger balloon. So when you take this ideal tetrahedron with 109.5 angles and you stick this lone pair in there that's a space hog, it's taking up more space, it's going to push these hydrogens a little bit closer together and the actual bond angle is 107. Not a huge difference from 109.5, but it is significant. So the bond angles get compressed on the bonding pairs. You should know the bond angles for the different geometries. And you need to know that a lone pair will compress them. So if I asked you what the bond angle for hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen is on ammonia, I would not expect you to know that it's 109, but I would expect you to be able to tell me it's less than 109.5 because it's going to be squished because of the extra repulsive lone pair. Let's look at water. It says, draw the Lewis structure for water. I have to put that in there because otherwise I forget. 
So H O H. We look at the Lewis structure. We count the number of electron groups. One, two, three, four. So this is a tetrahedral electron geometry. But then we look at where are the lone pairs. Well, we have two lone pairs. So if we make those invisible, just get rid of them. then what we have left is this shape. That's given the very fancy name, bent. It's a bent structure. We would expect the bond angle, ideally, to be 109.5, because the electron geometry was tetrahedral. But these lone pairs force that bond angle closer. And so it's actually 104.5. Because there are two lone pairs, it's more compressed than it was for the, night, for the ammonia where there was one lone pair. So here's the relative repulsion of electron groups. Um, lone pair, lone pair is the most repulsion. A lone pair next to a bonding pair is next. And the bonding, bonding pair is less. And so here with the methane, these are all bonding pairs. No lone pairs, and so we have the ideal geometry of 109.5. One lone pair sticking up here squeezes these together, 107. The two lone pairs, that lone pair, lone pair repulsion is even larger, and that forces the bond angle to be smaller. What about five electron groups with lone pairs? Draw the Lewis structure for SF4. Okay. SF4, and we need number of electrons. Four fluorines times seven, 28. Sulfur has six, 34. Um, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. I need to stick two more electrons on there. Can I put them on the sulfur? Can sulfur do an expanded octet? Yeah, it's a group, it's a period three element. It can do that. So there's a lone pair here. If you don't actually go through all the steps of drawing the correct Lewis structure, you might predict that this would have a tetrahedral geometry because there's four atoms, right? But there's a lone pair. So five groups makes a bipyramidal structure. But there's two options, because the bipyramid had two different bond angles, right? Here, the bond angle between the lone pair and the fluorine atoms would be 90 degrees. If we put the lone pair in the equatorial position, then the bond angle here is um, it's 90 with these guys, but it's 120 with these guys. So this is a better position because it has more space the lone pair is going to be in the equatorial position where it has 90 degree interaction with two atoms and 120 with two atoms. Here it's got 90 degree interaction with three atoms and that's not a happy place. So this is the lone pair. Then if we erase that, make it invisible, we get this structure and that's called a seesaw geometry another really technical name. Because if you tip it on its side, it looks like a seesaw, right? You got this guy coming out. You're gonna have to use your imagination on that one. <laughs> like, what on earth? I have some models we can play with later. Yes? Yeah, the electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. Um, they, yeah, I think that I 
I don't know if I made a mistake or if it was like that in the book. It is trigonal bipyramidal. Not that there's another bipyramidal, but that's what we called it earlier. Molecule like a bromine trifluoride. So we do the Lewis structure, we see that there are five groups around the bromine atom. Two of those are lone pairs. So the electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. Um, those two lone pairs are going to go into the equatorial positions, just like they did in the other one, because there's more space there. There's more room for them. So when we make these invisible, what we have left is this guy with 90 degree angles, and that's called T-shaped. And I wish they would have tipped it over, because it really does, looks like a T, right? That one's not so hard to imagine. So that's T-shaped. Five electron groups with lone pairs, um, three lone pairs now. Xenon difluoride. There's three lone pairs here and two bonds. So we still have this electron geometry, this trigonal bipyramidal. The lone pairs are all going to be in the equatorial position. And that leaves the fluorine atoms to be in the axial positions. So this actually has a linear geometry, which is what you might guess if you just looked at this and didn't think about it very much. Um, so sometimes guessing works. Any questions? So this would have a 180 degree bond angle. Well, six electron groups. Um, here's BF5. There's five fluorines and one lone pair. Total of six groups. That's the octahedral shape. So here we have an octahedron. Um, in the octahedron, all of the angles are the same. So this lone pair could be in any of the positions. They're all the same. It doesn't matter. When we make this invisible, we get what's called a square pyramid. Because right, if we connect these, that's the square at the bottom. And it goes up to a point like a pyramid. A pyramid with a square as its base instead of a triangle. Xenon tetrafluoride. Now we have four single bonds in two lone pairs. Still the six groups. Electron geometry is octahedral. Now we have two lone pairs. So the first lone pair goes in here. The second lone pair is going to be on the other side because they take up more space. And so if they're across from each other, they have more space than if they're next to each other. So those will be opposite from each other, and this is called square planar, because it forms a square and it's flat. All the atoms lie in the same plane. Here is a table in your textbook, which you may or may not find useful. Um, I prefer to just think about balloons, but you know, balloons are fun. Uh, you can also look at that table. So summarizing Vesper theory, geometry is determined by the number of electron groups. Um, the number of electron groups we get from the Lewis structure. These are the ones that count as electron groups. Each of them counts as one, lone pair, single bond, double bond, triple bond, single electron. The geometry of those electron groups determined by their repulsions. Bond angles can vary. Multiple bonds are bulkier than single bonds. Lone pairs are more repulsive than any of them. 